So if y'all didn't know, they recently made a change to the Dragon Fire Shield to where it rewards defense XP instead of magic and HP XP on NPCs. Unfortunately, there are some quirks to this, and the current spec does still roll against an NPC's magic attack as well as magic defense bonus, so it is limited in its application, but it has made a huge difference to my defense-only account, which is an Iron Man, which I spent a year just using an alt method at Iron Dragons for over 10,000 kills to get the Draconic Visage and finally craft that shield, which will now for the first time be actually useful to my account. This is the continuation of the Defense Saga, Episode 17, including account progression and of course, the DFS update which graduates my account to even another new level of being able to finally hit on some NPC. Before we get into the tactical advantage of the new Dragonfire Shield update, and just more progression on my defense account, I wanted to give a shout out to our sponsor of today's video, Opera GX. Opera GX is a browser, but not just any browser. It pulls away from the boring, old experience you're used to having with browsers, and that's why I love it. I mean, right off the bat here, look at this color. There's amazing artistic features to this browser as well though, functionality. It's one browser to rule them all and it enhances your gaming performance whenever you have your browser open by being able to limit your CPU, RAM, and even now your network bandwidth. Do you want even more color? Well let me introduce you to GX Mods. There's a wide variety of mods you can pick from which edits your keyboard sounds, background music for each tab, your wallpaper, your themes, and even the sound effects. There's even an old school RuneScape theme, and I mean, listen to this. You can go to the GX store to find any of these mods for free. By the way, the browser is free. You even get a free VPN through the browser. And you can modify the mods themselves by turning off certain settings if you don't want the background music on each tab, for example. You can also include smart AI prompts on the sidebar here and use chat GPT. You can literally type your question to AI right here and they'll give me, of course, a perfect answer. Although, I don't know who this third person is. I don't think he's going to be considered the greatest person on RuneScape or even in the top five. Switching browsers also is no longer a pain in the ass. You can literally go to the synchronization tab in your settings, import bookmarks from Chrome, and bam, there they are. And here's an old bookmark I have from six years ago whenever I was learning how to do the Infernal from watching AdWam. So thanks once again to Opera GX for sponsoring this video. And you can use my link below to download Opera GX today. Right off the bat, we're headed into 97 hit points close to 99 finally through taxi games and just AFK and Soul Wars. I've been coming across this really weird bug here which um, just starts to make things disappear whether it's objects or entire interfaces like my bank here. I can't tell if it's client based but it seems to crash my entire game after a few seconds every time this occurs. And there are some weirder things that have happened with this such as XP drops happening all at once. I don't know, maybe one day it'll actually come in handy. I actually planted a spirit seed for once and let it grow rather than traded it in for farming packs. I wanted to see if I could, you know, take this to complete the Varrock Medium Diary because I can actually do the quest that gives defense XP as well there. But it looks like I can't use this. Apparently on release of the farming guild you could use the spirit tree patch here to transport yourself to the Grand Exchange with a spirit tree without Trino Village quest done. And once again, I can't do this quest because Trino Village gives attack XP. This was possible and there is one account I know of with that done. The last episode involved me taking down KBD and I needed blue dragon scales for more anti-fire potions. This was way better to get here with my 70 plus agility rather than going to the Isle of Souls dungeon. So I collected a few hundred blue scales here and took this route with the air balloon because my transportation once again is very limited with one magic. If you haven't noticed, this video is going to be much more organic. I'm going to be just talking as I normally do and not putting on a YouTube voice. I'm also going to be doing a minimal amount of edits. But we're once again back at KBD using the 4 cow method that I used in the last video. This blocks the KBD in and I'm still going for the hide penetration task by timing my last attack, trying to hit a 1 as it dies to Venom to get that stab weapon completion and unfortunately I keep hitting zeros. It's like a 0.5% chance that I'm gonna hit on the KBD the last second. So technically if I kill this NPC 200 times, I'm due for good enough RNG to get that combat achievement completed. 
But hopefully this doesn't take us 200 kills because these are rather long. I'm getting about 6 or 7 kills an hour with this method. I first lower down the KBD's defense with a Warhammer here. Luckily it's got fast health regen. I let its HP regen back up. And then I Venom it with a 1 or 2 from an Airstrike and a Serpentine home. Then I finally go in to hit the 1 to get the kill credit. And lastly, like I just talked about, I go in with the Bone Spear, the extra stab bonus, and try and hit it on its last hit to get the Hide Penetration task. Sitting here waiting for Venom is literally the longest process in all of this because he has a very fast health regen, I think it's about 10 per minute, but we'll one day get that high penetration task and I want to show you this right here. I use this emote to grab these remotely so I don't mess up my friends doing the cow emotes and stand on their body and make the NPC that the cow is transparent. That's why this works, it's because the cow is an NPC and it's a 3x3 boxing in the KBD and therefore I'm able to use that emote there and not mess up the process as well this used to be possible with the zombie hand emote but they fixed that and hilariously enough another halloween update made it possible again with the bat emote my friend messed up he didn't click the teleport but somehow we got the hide penetration with my alt killing kbd the same time as my iron man even though I didn't get a drop or a loot, somehow that counted, and I will take it, and I wish I knew this sooner or else I could have saved myself a lot of time. By the way, I got a second KBD head from doing this escapade of killing more KBD than the last video, so there's that. At least I get a little bit of a bonus, even though I already had one, so it's not really relevant at all, but yeah. I wanted to try some giant mole combat achievements, but I realized how disgustingly hard this was to kill on my account. It has a normal HP regen rate. And uh, trying to just poison it is all you can do. You can't Venom this one like you can the KBD. And you would have to poison it multiple times in a row with its stacked defense level. I tried this method here, which looks wild. I bonded up a bunch of my alt accounts and splashed it because I read on the wiki, it doesn't dig if you splash it. So I'm like, what if I splash it every single tick, which is five accounts worth of airstrike spells. And unfortunately, this did not work though. He still decided to dig on me under half HP, which he normally does. I thought maybe the splash would override the actual hit and somehow it wouldn't take into account that hit. I even tried splashing all five on the same tick along with my normal attack style. Honestly, I'm still just waiting on DFS changes. I don't know when they're going to happen, but apparently they're going to happen soon, according to my inside information. So, in the meantime, we're going to do some testing of LMS. I realized LMS is huge, essential to this account, because if I can somehow get the boost out like I did in episode 2, I can do so many things. I can sacrifice some magic XP for Wilderness Medium Diaries, as well as do Wilderness Easy Diaries, and then get into the lower variant Wilderness Bosses. As well, I could then finally enchant my Fury and Region Bracelet, which... I just really want because honestly the glory and black gloves look hideous. That's my main reason. That's why I want it. So we're out here at LMS testing this all. Oh, also I can get a hosta by sacrificing some strength XP if I was able to smuggle that strength boost out. As well as do an, a few other quests that I'll need quest points for for Slayer Block task. Which would be something like Elemental Workshop 2. Yeah, that would be a big one. As well, I'm going on a tangent here. But I can even just smuggle out the stats and go kill all the bosses inside of Beneath Cursed Sands and complete that quest to get access to Tombs of a Masket if I somehow had this boost. So I'm stuck here in LMS testing around. I actually was here for over 12 hours, two days in a row, just trying to find a way to get this boost out of here. One thing I did find that's wild is I got a Staff of the Dead out of a crate inside of LMS, used it as I exited, and it somehow transferred the special attack effect over to my account. I didn't think this would actually work, but as you can see here, the hits are reduced, and I do have the Staff of the Dead spec for 60 seconds. Now, I don't know if this would still work if I didn't have a Staff of the Dead on after getting kicked out of LMS. It might, but even if it does, like it's pretty minimally useful. It's only going to work for 60 seconds, and then it's gone. Another thing I tried to break into was an extra dialogue here with Otto to get Barbarian Hosta and Barbarian Smithing before completing the fishing portion which requires strength. That's why I can't get Hostas currently because there's a 35 strength requirement, but I thought maybe what if I get a broken Hosta and pull up an extra dialogue on this guy because literally Barbarian Training is just that buggy to where it's not allowing me to do the smithing training because there's not enough dialogues. Unfortunately this did not work. but. 
hey, the concept was cool. I went back to Guardians of the Rift. I'm still trying to get 85 rune crafting extremely slow here, as well as the rewards from this minigame. Because once I hit 85 and I already have the needle for the Colossal Pouch, I'm going to make that thing. I'm going to do what lies below and use my Ring of the Elements to Earth Altar Teleport. Use the shortcut to Chaos Runes and make a bunch of double Chaos Runes all the way from 85 to 99. Cash those Chaos Runes in for Tackle and then use that Tackle to get 99 crafting. Scaling is a goal on this account and my Dragon Pickaxe definitely helps me here. But it's not a priority. So I just kind of do it in my downtime and whenever I'm kind of feeling burnt out of something. Also, I like to take on new content. Scurrious came out today, and this is something I can actually kind of do, sort of. I found that I can get kill credit even as an Iron Man if I just hit on this thing and there's less than 10 people in the room, and I do, you know, at least the top 10 damage. Unfortunately, there's more than 10 people in this room. Maybe it's not 10. I swear it's like between 10 and 20 is the number, though, because some of these I did damage on and I did not get the kill credit. Others I did and did get the kill credit where it looked like there was more than 10 people. But I will never get the drop as an Iron Man in a mass like this. I need to actually go in and do this probably in a solo instance or with my alt. But Scurrious, I don't really ever want the pet from this. I'm just knocking out some KC right now because I do want the combat achievements when they possibly come out for the KC. So I'm going to knock out over 50 Scurrious kills doing this here with a bunch of massers. Because I thought this might also be a glitch or a bug. Maybe it wasn't intended to award Iron Man the kill credit even though they don't get the drop. And I wanted to utilize it on the first day when it was possible. Low level defense peers take note this might be a good training method with an alt or something to summon these rats here because you're guaranteed to hit on them and you get full XP from them and as a defense peer who is low level who does not have access to soul wars it is very slow to train and this is probably an optimal route. To speed up the 50 kill count process I even got on my alt here and decided to D warhammer spec it at least once per rat spawn in order to give me a more of a chance to hit it and therefore get the KC because there was a lot of times I couldn't even hit a 1 on this thing before it died in these mass worlds as well. I decided to freeze this in the corner on my alt because people didn't know this at the time but freezing him would stop him from going to his next cycle and allow us to kill him much quicker so I was kind of helping these guys out doing them a favor but they didn't really know it so yeah you're welcome. The new combat task came in and now we're further away from hard rather than closer even though i did complete both kill count tasks automatically here i can't complete any of these other scurious ones i don't think at least they seem pretty much impossible and um unfortunately along with the desert treasure 2 ones that came into into effect here it put me back actually further from hard i didn't know they would scale up all the tiers but they did and yeah, we were 7 points away from unlock last episode at the very end, and now we're 10 points away. So, a little bit of a backtrack, but not too bad. I'm getting impatient waiting for this DFS update, so I think I'm going to try and do one of the magic-only tasks for Barrow's combat achievements and get it done with Poison Dynamite, because Poison Dynamite is technically a magic-based attack, if I can hit with it because it is awful. I noticed when coming back to Barrow's after a long time that this guy wants me to talk to him, and he wants me to do this mini-quest which rewards me with prayer XP lamps at the end. Luckily, I never have to turn in the emblem to this guy, I found out, or even use the lamps if I got them and completed the mini quest. We're over here at Carol's, and we're going to be testing the Poison Dynamite magic only combat task for any Barrows Brother. Kill it with Mage, that's the only requirement. Poison Dynamite is a magic based attack, but it rolls off your melee stats and not your Mage. It's really weird. So, it does look not at Mage defense as well, it looks at the NPC's normal defense. So, Carol's has the least defense out of all of these i figured i'm most likely to hit on this thing with poison dynamite and a slash weapon like this iron 2h here but because poison dynamite is just god awful i went here for over four inventories and could never hit a singular one i would have finished off the rest of the kill with recoils but never even got to that point we're back at fishing trawler i'm having to buy this swamp paste because i really don't want to make my own it's costing actually a lot more money than i remember but i do need the angler outfit to do a combat task in temporos after a few hours here, some even on mobile, we finally got the full angler outfit. Very AFK, very boring, but we got it and we can do a singular Temporos task now. I also needed this outfit not for this combat achievement you're about to see pop up, but also I want the spirit angler outfit and I want the upgrade. I am quite a few spirit flakes away, so I'm going to be fishing at Temporos and doing this minigame for probably a couple of days to get enough flakes to make that entire outfit because one day I do want to just AFK minnows and get sharks that way. 
I was eating some pizza rolls, so I had to come here. I can't I can't eat pizza rolls and do tempuros at the same time, but I did get 77 fishing, fishing some trout with my newly acquired fishing barrel. So I've almost gotten all the spirit flakes for the outfit, but unfortunately, the last pull I did, I was literally like 20 flakes off from completing it, so we're still here. I think I'm gonna come here anyways afterwards to get some more fishing XP, to get 80 fishing just because it looks clean. I believe I need 82 eventually anyways for minnows, so we'll be back here again. This is my best fishing XP in the game right now. If I'm doing only fish and not cooking, I can get upwards of 70k XP per hour right now, which is pretty insane. We are still doing some tob in the background every now and then when our team is ready, which is very rare because it's hard to get people together, man. That's just all it is. But fortunately, Yama got a purple and it was not a face guard. That's still the only thing I need. Now, I have Ferminic Trials done, so I wanted to get the Enchanted Liar and I need apparently 81 or 82 fishing to pull things like sea turtles and I believe raw manta rays, especially out of the pool at Temporos. But I wanted to see if boosting my fishing up with these fish pies would help me pull some of those extra raw food because we need a thousand of each to enchant our liar to get infinite teleports to the Ferminic area, which could be helpful. I keep getting these randoms outside of Temporos, but they're free XP lamps. I'll take them. Every time I'm done with the game, it seems like one just pops up and we're extremely close now to 62 Slayer. I just had a mime one, so another one just came up, but we haven't got lamps from those yet, unfortunately. I didn't know if anyone else knows this, but the caskets you get as a reward are stackable, and they have a lot of clue scroll drops. Look at all these clues I have on the ground. Unfortunately, I can't do all of them, but if I got a lot more caskets, I could possibly juggle hard clues with these. Another random straight off the boat, and that's going to get us to 62 Slayer finally. So we're not 80 fishing yet, but we are getting our spirit angler outfit and now we can focus on only fishing, no cooking inside of Temporos. I'm literally dropping raw harpoon fish. I'm not bringing anything but a harpoon on my inventory for this no cook method. I'm kind of just making up as I go, but I'm able to get 73k XP an hour doing this and it's extremely efficient. Once again, better than literally two tick harpooning with a normal harpoon at my fishing level for XP. Unfortunately though, it's only five reward permits per game and they are very close. Like close as in like if I would have missed a few ticks, the game would have ended at the last second. And here we go. This is my goal for now, 80 fishing. I might AFK to 82 before minnows, but we're done for now. I'm out of this place, hopefully permanently. We didn't get a harpoon or a pet, but who cares? Okay, we're back at LMS testing things one thing i noticed that's crazy is the spec weapons in f2p lms casual which is the only lms you can do i believe now they don't even work you can't even spec with them i i tried everything i couldn't use the spec bar it's because i'm an f2p but it doesn't recognize i'm an lms that's how poorly coded some of the dead content in this game is also did you know there was never a chest in lms to claim your reward from whenever they moved LMS to the Ferox Enclave for over 10 months, meaning not a singular person like said anything about it for 10 months because not a singular person used the high stakes method of the game on the third floor. Yeah, there's some real dead content out here that's just buggy as hell. I'm going to try one of these clue scrolls from the fishing caskets I got. By the way, I love the hunter cape teleport to the wilderness here. It's so handy for these clues. Got Zami robe bottoms. Fun fact is, I believe this is one of the only sources I can get this from, and it's my best in slot magic attack bonus, which I don't think I'll need for DFS. I don't think it affects it. But like, I can't even do underground pass up to the step where I can get these in that quest because that requires 25 range, which is not boostable. I once again forgot an anti-poison, but we killed the Sarah wizard with an interface to stall the poison. And we got another step. We're on a good roll here with this hard clip. Another Zamorak Wizard, another Wilderness Step. I actually like these because I can do practically all of them, and that's very rare for these hard clues. Another rare thing to happen, I can actually complete this hard clue step. We're on step number four, so we're getting up there, and it's because I can talk to this guy because I have Fremenic Trials and Isles done. Little known fact, you can't talk to this guy and complete the clue step unless you're wearing Jester Outfit or you have the quest completed. Yeah, for some reason it works if you have Jester Outfit and the quest not completed, but if you're wearing anything else, it doesn't seem to work. And this next step scared me. I didn't even know there was a hard clue step that I can do that where I can wield everything. All of this stuff right here is no requirement to wield, and I have it in the bank, so we can do this step. I never imagined I would ever even be able to kill a double agent because I didn't know I could do a wield step, so this is the first double agent we've ever killed, and it took a while, I'll tell you that. 
So finally, we got a hard casket. This is like our fifth hard clue ever complete on the account and a unique. We got the bucket helm and 10 purple sweets. I will honestly take that. Not third age, but you know, that's very rare we can even complete one of these things. So Jagex screwed us over. They added another piece to the collection log on forestry, which we had completed finally. So now we're going for that. That is the beehive thingy-majig that uh, it gives you. Apparently it's very easy to get and it's not rare at all so I'm not that upset but I did have to go back and do some more forestry and that's what it's called a sturdy beehive part. It's apparently the last collection log I need once again for forestry. Alright so I have these attack and defense piers I made early on for the iron dragon grind to venom the iron dragons when I was going for the visage. So we're going to go complete the lost tribe here and eventually death to Dorgashin to get the bone dagger special attack which is a guaranteed hit as long as the NPC has not hit you first. So it's going to be a guaranteed, I believe, 50% venom chance on any NPC, no matter their defense level, as long as I'm using a poison weapon like a poison bone dagger and wielding the serpentine helm. Why I'm using these accounts specifically for all this is, well, because they're one strength, and therefore on the poison dagger spec, they're either going to hit a zero or a one, and that means I'll be able to hit the NPC venom it and hope it regens back to full with only one damage being taken before the venom. I guess I can hit a zero and that would technically make it more like a 40 or 33% chance of getting a venom off on any NPC, but that's still good odds. So we've completed death to Dorgashin and we've actually done this on two accounts. I have a third one, but I'm going to hold off on that for now as I don't think it'll be needed. All right, so today is the day. The DFS has apparently been changed to melee only XP on NPCs, not only players, which is going to be huge for our account. I want to test this out first on my alt here, and we'll come back to deranged arche archaeologist with the bone dagger method I was mentioning here in a bit. But yep, that is defense XP, so it's looking good. I wanted to make sure they actually changed it so I didn't ruin my account first. Before I go to the deranged archaeologist, I want to go ahead and get some Barrow's tasks done. Kind of like the magic only tasks that I failed before because I could never get a poison diamond off. Now I literally hit almost every time with this shield and I can combine that with recoils and take down the Barrow's brothers actually at a pretty decent speed. I'm also going to attempt to get the task done where I don't lose any prayer points and kill every single Barrow's brother as I wasn't really able to do this before with just recoils because Darok hits like a truck whenever he's low HP and Guthans also heals himself whenever he hits you so you really can't out recoil the DPS from him healing himself therefore the DFS update made it possible to do a full barrels run on this account all right that should be it the magic only barrows kill defense what defense I thought it was more than one point but we got it done and who knows maybe one day they'll change the DFS to not be a magic based attack and this will be an extinct combat achievement. I just wanted to get done the magic based attack tasks as soon as possible because I think DFS is supposed to be obviously a magical shield, but I don't know if it's intended to roll against NPCs magic levels and their magic defense. But for some NPCs, this is better like Barrows because they have almost none except for Arams, of course. I couldn't finish the Barrows combat task that involved me killing Carols with a special attack. I think it doesn't count the DFS as a special attack, it just said it failed the task. But we were able to complete all the Barrows brothers. Guthans was a little bit more tricky because we had to do 6 DFS specs in a matter of 5 minutes and hope to kill him, which we barely did. Luckily, the DFS actually has a minimum hit of 15, so between 15 and its max of 25, it averages 20 hits. You put together 6 of those, it's going to be over Guthans 110-ish HP. Alright, here is actually our very first full Barrows run on the account, and hopefully the combat task for the prayer. Okay, no combat task. We did get more loot than normal though, as expected. I must have lost uh, the prayer point early on. I'm not quite sure, it doesn't even say in my chat where it failed, but um, yeah, we didn't get the task, so I guess we're going to have to spend another 45 minutes killing all six of the brothers, so that's going to be fun. Now I do have to bank between a lot of these kills. I can sometimes get two Barrows brothers killed in one trip, and especially with Arams, I have to rely on hitting him with melee because his high magic defense. The DFS can hit on him because it does roll my defense as if it was my magic level, so I'm 85 defense versus like his 100 magic. So it's not impossible to hit on him, but it's definitely a lot more difficult than the other brothers who have literally one magic. Alright, here we go. More loot potential once again, way more than normal. We usually just get a few coins from Torags, but we got the task done as well. Finally, that actually worked. 
Okay, methods for recharging the shield. I'm gonna go over this real quick because basically I'm going to be using my house, doing the air altar teleport with the ring of elements, running to my house a little bit south of that, going to the middle of Karen, running down there, and then running in the giant pit of bronze and iron dragons to recharge my shield. I'm going to save my bottled dragon breath, which I do have 300 of just in case I need it for some kind of remote task to be done that's going to take several attempts. Who knows in the future something might be borderline impossible and I'm going to be having to go through like 20 of those potions at a time. So for now, we're running to the Karen Slayer dungeon and just recharging our shield here. I also have another thought. If I ever come across enough just raw GP on this Iron Man, I want to put in 25 mil payments for steel dragons in my player owned house basement as I could eventually, once I'm 99 construction, just instantly teleport to the house, run down the basement, and get hit by tons of these steel dragons, 25 mil a piece to put in your dungeon, by the way. So it's gonna be costly, but it would be really cool to have on a unique account like this. As long as these Leo randoms take, they are actually worth it. I get very low Slayer XP per hour. Even doing the alt Slayer method, I think this beats it, just doing a Leo random and <laughs> using the lamp on Slayer for a 600 XP drop. It's still quicker to do that. Eventually one day I do want to do Slayer though, and I think I'm going to do that through the wilderness. And I believe you can get upwards of 30k an hour on the best tasks out there with a bunch of alts, but that's going to be for the farther away future, as I do want dragon boots, but they're not a must at this time. I wanted to try a couple combat achievements in Cox I couldn't do before, and that is killing the Ice Demon without losing prayer points and maybe even HP. But after specking this guy a few times, I realized I don't think this is going to be possible. His magic and his magic defense is way too high, and he's immune to like recoils and poison and everything, so alts really can't help me get the kill credit on this thing. And uh, we're going to have to save this for another day, honestly, because it's way more difficult than I realized, and my DFS alone isn't going to take this thing down. A combat achievement I thought would be more hopeful would be this by wielding a pickaxe and maybe dragon fire shield specking the guardian and hoping that it would actually roll against its one magic defense and still think I'm wielding a pickaxe. But it doesn't, and even the simplest combat tasks such as killing these guardians and cocks I still cannot do. Okay, we've wrapped all the way back around to the crazy archaeologist and using these two serpentine alts with the bone daggers to put into place this new method and why I trained up these accounts in the first place and quested Beth the Dorgishan on them. Although this guy does have magic defense bonus, he has no magic attack bonus which is his base magic defense level. So I can frequently hit on him with the DFS and get some combat achievements out of the way. And he drops those wilderness shield pieces and a cosmetic fedora. I'm going to be hitting a 1 on one of the alts possibly even with a bone dagger non-poisoned eventually, and then switching to the other alt, hitting a zero with a goblin warhammer that's guaranteed to hit a zero, so I can see when the NPC regens since he regens at a normal and very slow rate. I can then see the 20 second window I have in between the time of hitting that NPC and then re-venoming him to go ahead and use my next bone dagger spec in hopes that I will venom this NPC before he regens back up to full HP. From there, once he starts getting Venom downed, I need to take a damage hit and then DFS spec him for the kill credit on my Iron Man, and it's as simple as that. But it actually isn't as simple as that, and I'll get into that here in a second. So the first kill went swimmingly. I was able to hit the one with a spear, hit it with a Cursed Goblin Hammer for a zero to see its HP go back up, see the timing and its HP actually regenerates, then hit a 1 on the other account with a Bone Dagger Poisoned for a what I thought was a 50% Venom chance to then get the Venom to go down to then DFS spec it to then take the aggro and then get this Uncut Sapphire on the ground. There were a few problems. Now I did get the second kill just fine and I dodged all of his read attacks to get the I'd rather not learn achievement. And that was done by dodging the attack on all of my accounts, not getting hit by any of that at any time. But the next achievement being one where you have to kill him with only magic, I didn't think much into this and I thought because the accounts using the bone dagger were using it before his HP reset that it would reset the combat task and it wouldn't really matter if my accounts hit it with the bone dagger because even though it was a melee weapon he reset his stats and his HP and it should no longer remember that I ever hit it with a bone dagger right? Well wrong. It definitely remembers even after it regens HP, and although the DFS is a magic based attack, the bone dagger is not. So I went and grabbed another alt account. This one had a toxic trident and a serpentine helm and wind strike. Now I couldn't hit a 1 on this NPC to figure out whenever it regened because hitting the 1 would require melee and that ruined the combat achievement task. So I would just have to guess, I would have to hop from world to world 
hope that I would airstrike a 1, not a 2, because airstrike can hit a 2, and then hope that it was within that 20 second window of him regenerating his HP, when my other account would be able to DFS spec him and hold the aggro as well as the venom and finish off the combat achievement. This took over about 20 world hops, as I kept venoming him at the wrong time whenever I would hit a 1, or I would keep hitting 2s and frustratingly just had to hop worlds every time this happened. But finally, after about an hour of hopping worlds, trying to hit a 1 in the 20 second window, then pulling the Venom, I managed to get a successful kill going, and we DFS specced him for the hit, and finally got his drop as well as the magic only combat task achieved. And guess what that means? I also got the hard tier of combat achievements completed. Yes, we can now get our new hilt. I was actually yelling in Discord while doing that entire last task because I knew it was the last one I needed to do and I just kept getting so unlucky with those airstrikes and hitting twos and hitting ones at the wrong time. But finally we've got the hilt. After all this time, I accidentally picked up a hilt one over there and dropped on the floor. But we can go to Trollheim an infinite amount of times now. We have more hard clue access. We also have more pest control points. But honestly the Trollheim teleport is going to be the biggest thing here as it's going to be a way to very easily kill my account, almost AFK like, I just keep teleporting to the Trollheim and die right here. These trolls actually ignore your defense level as well, so being a defense peer, it's great. They'll always hit on me, they're almost faster at killing me than me manually killing myself with a rock cake and then running somewhere else like I was before with dark wizards, and yeah, it's just very simple. Farming cape teleport to bank lobsters, then teleport here to Trollheim to remotely death store things at that other gravesite I died at before. There's one thing I overlooked here though, and that is the fact that lobsters protect over these hilts. Luckily though, I can get an unlimited amount of these for free, and then once I'm done with say 20 deaths or so, by losing one hilt per death, I can just go back to death storage and pull them out for free, no charge, and then bank them again, repeat the process if I need to. So yes, I will lose one hilt every time I die, but I can get tons of these things and I can pull them right back out of death whenever I'm finished with this death dotting. And right now I'm going to be going straight into more combat achievements because I do want to support Cushion after seeing what they did with the rat boss and the desert treasure 2 thing. I need a few extra points in case they ever make more updates as I want to keep my hilt for as long as possible and inevitably I think I can hold enough points for hard. I definitely can't go for elite right now. Maybe with TOA and doing literally every possible task I could barely hit that but then it's just waiting for another future update and I'm sabotaged yet again. So I really don't think elites in the books for now. The first place I'm going to use this new death dot mechanic by using the Trollheim teleports is going to be the deranged archaeologist. Now I've never fought this boss, he's kind of like a mini boss. I didn't even know he existed to be honest, but he's like the crazy archaeologist's even more crazy cousin, I guess you could say. He hits more with his special attack, but he's not in the wilderness, that's the only benefit. As well though, you can't really alt him, um, it's just going to take too long and I don't really need to, I have a lot of supplies and recoils and this is going to be much easier with just the death dotting of lobsters and using a bunch of recoils to take him out. Okay, so here we are. He's at the southern end of Fossil Island. He has very similar stats to the Crazy Archaeologist. He also is weak to magic, so I can DFS spec him every two minutes when my shield cools down, as well as I'm going to be using these recoils. Thinking about this further, I should have honestly recoiled and DFS spec for the magic combat achievement on the Crazy Archaeologist as well, but I didn't think recoil damage would count against the magic task and it doesn't seem to be mattering on this guy, so it probably doesn't matter on the crazy one as well. So I'm going to be just sitting here recoiling, eating these lobsters. There's about 500 of them. I think I can get three kills per trip, and it takes a long time to death out these lobsters, about 20 deaths at Trollheim after remotely putting my grave in this location. But eventually we're gonna get this, and there we are, Mage of the Swamp completed. Once again, I want to take out the mage task as soon as possible in case they ever decide to change the attack base of the dragon fire shield. Next, he has another combat achievement similar to the crazy archaeologist and that is dodging a special attack. This guy's special attack is much worse though. It bounces much more sporadically, goes all the way around where even I sometimes run and my ping is really bad because I'm in the Midwest, not on the East or West Coast. So a lot of the times I literally just run into this guy's attack and I'll get him down almost even all the way 
and then eventually just mess up at the end. He'll just throw one singular one of those pieces of his special attack in my run path, even though I'm running to literally the opposite side of the map. It's just seemingly random. So I did mess up again, but we did get a collection log slot. Our first long boot on the account. I didn't even know this guy dropped those. He has some weird drops. Nothing even unique though. I will be going for the 10 kill count and 25 kill count combat tasks on this guy. So it's bound to just happen that I get the task done where he doesn't hit me with the special. But look at that. Another long bone back to back. I did get a little bored of killing the deranged archaeologist. It's like 4 or 5 kills per hour. So extremely slow. I wanted to try Hespori. I had this thing planted forever now. And I don't know. It's got very high magic defense. And unfortunately, I don't think I'm still going to be able to kill it because it's immune to recoil. But I want to try it. I'm thinking maybe with somehow some extra brews as well, a magic switch between its magic and range attack. For magic defense, I can last in here long enough to maybe get a singular Hispori KC. I didn't even know it poisons you. This is the first time I've ever done this. I probably really should have brought an anti-poison, but we're in here just to experiment to be honest right now and see how feasible this is. I hilariously hit him with my ham joint more than I do with my DFS spec. I tried to find a safe spot to see if I could maybe wait between the two minute cooldowns of the DFS spec. I never hit a DFS spec in like four attempts, so I'm just assuming this boss is going to be impossible as it is unless I had just insane luck, rapid luck. I believe I could stay here for maybe about 15 DFS specs with the right inventory and right preparation, but his magic defense is just too high. Hespori has so many combat achievements with it as well, it has so much benefit to my farming. Unfortunately, I don't think I can do it at this time. Maybe with some other kind of update, it might just be possible, but not at the current moment. And in fact, fun fact, it used to not be immune to recoil, and if that was the case, I definitely could do this. Okay, I'm all over the place right now. I'm trying to find any boss that has a low magic defense or low magic attack level, and Scorpia is definitely one of those bosses. Testing out these ideas with the shield is so fun, and as you can see, I've already developed a scorpion method that is super fun and super quick to kill this thing. When I say quick, I mean like 7 to 10 kills per hour on average with no PKers. Unfortunately, they came out with a Scorpia update though the same day they came out with the DFS. But what I basically do is I airstrike it for a 1. If I get a 2, I run out and reset it so it doesn't get venomed. On that alt account with the Serpentine Helm, it's 100% Venom chance unless you leave the area. Then I'll go ahead and sit in the cannon for a while with my Range Protect on to protect from the Mini Scorpions. Then I'll come inside on my Defense Pier here. Before it's under half HP, I'll throw a DFS spec on it. Hopefully earlier. Sometimes you hit a 0 with the DFS spec, so it takes 2. That's why that one was so close. But this will never summon the healers of the Scorpion if I hit before it hits half HP. And therefore it's just going to die to Venom before the healers even pop out. And that in itself, never summoning the healers, is a combat achievement that I do plan to get done. So after finally hitting, I have two attempts during a Scorpia kill. I then go ahead and sit near the Scorpia, take aggression because you have to be the last person it aggresses to as a boss NPC does. And then make sure I leave on my other account and there we go, we get the drop, KC1. It's as easy as that. You have to hit a 1 with the airstrike on Scorpia because it does have a fast region rate, um, but not fast enough for 2. So if I had a 2 with the airstrike once again, I have to leave the cave first on my alt. And I found this out the hard way. I did the entire kill left on my alt. Had Scorpia died of Venom, by the way, Scorpia can be Venom. That's why this boss is so much easier than the rest. And Iron Man can't get the loot if someone else did more damage. It still remembered that it had done an extra damage before it regen to full. So like I said, kind of irony, the DFS update came out the same day they updated Scorpio's drop table. So my alt account was getting hunted a lot. Fortunately though, my defense account is such a low combat level that almost no one, even up in this extremely high level of wilderness, would ever attack me. They would just keep killing my alt for 20k, like monk robes and prayer potions. And I guess congratulations to you. Sometimes I would have entire clans come just kill me for 20k and I'm thinking, do they split that? I hope not. So one of the combat tasks I was going for here besides just kill count and trying to go for the shield pieces was I can't reach that and that is the task where you don't want to take any damage. It was extremely easy to mess this up on my alt because I'm controlling two accounts and I'm switching prayers etc. But eventually I had someone actually hop on my alt for me and it was much easier to complete this task. I was able to then finally take no damage on either account and the last thing I would have to do is rely on purely RNG for the last of Scorpia because I did have to take that aggression for the kill credit. Just hope it hits a zero and by doing that I was able to get done that task. So I need once again the 10 and 25 kill count tasks from Scorpia but I also want a shield piece. Maybe both of them honestly here. It's just so easy. 
to kill this thing. Maybe I even want a pet. No, probably not that. That's just too much of a grind. But I want to collect as much as I can here. But also, I want to put a hold on it. I want to save this treat for a later time and go back to the hideous, awful, deranged archaeologist and complete those tasks. Once again, the prison Pete random has a chance of giving me a lamp. I didn't hop to F2P because I can't be asked. Honestly, I don't even, yeah, I shouldn't even do this random anymore. Waste of time. Yeah, we're back here with our favorite friend. We're gonna go for 10 kill count, 25 kill count, and hopefully dodge all his special attacks for once. Oh my god, I think we actually did it. We didn't get hit once. God bless. We're not even at 10 kill count yet. I'll take that. We're still killing the deranged archaeologist. Ooh, a large fossil. Wait, I actually need that. I still am missing one large fossil piece from the museum. Literally one. I keep pulling plant fossils and I cannot get the one I need. All right. Hope, hope, hope. Oh my God. A stump? Another plant fossil? Is this even supposed to happen? I swear you're supposed to get these in a row. I don't know what's wrong with this, but we almost have two of every plant fossil, and we just need one normal large fossil. That weird client bug is happening again, and some- whoa, is that right? What is my XP doing? How am I getting 420 XP for picking- I don't know what my XP was before, so I don't know if that's accurate. I don't know if that's the Ruin Light plugin, or if that's the game, and we're missing a hot air balloon over here. I swear to god I am not doing anything weird, I have no idea what is going on right now. So I went invisible, the game crashed, and dropped another 800 XP on me. Yeah, it makes literally no sense, I don't know what's happening. We actually ran out of shield charges again, but we're still on the deranged archaeologist grind so we need some more, so we came to Karend, don't want to waste our bottled dragonfire breath just yet. I was informed by another defense peer that you can actually do the special attack Barrow's task on Carol's here. The thing that was messing me up before, I guess, was the recoils I was using. This really helps me out because this means we can get another combat task done. I didn't even know it was possible. I just have to make sure that I'm hitting this guy enough, which I have six attempts. I average a 20. He's only got like 110 HP, so definitely possible and should be on average the first kill. And yes, there it is, the first kill. That's three points. That's a very good task to have. Once again, between death dotting more food, I do go to death's coffer and pull out all these gommel's hilts. I guess I could go to birthorp too, but I don't want to waste my games necklaces going there. I have limited amounts of those. We just regained all our hilts and we'll go back one at a time, lose another one at a time for about 20 inventories of lobsters and finish off the deranged archaeologist. And the longest part of killing the deranged archaeologist, or I wouldn't say longest, but about equivalent to the amount of time it takes to kill three of the archaeologists, it takes to actually death pile all that food. This should be the 10th kill finally after we've wasted a lot of lobsters a lot of recoils but it's not that bad honestly i just have to eat very quickly between his attacks because he does sometimes out dps me and the brews are kind of for emergency purposes like combo eat a lobster into a brew if necessary but yeah that's 10 kills let's go for 25 next kill number 25 i believe i'm literally out of lobsters we have two brews left and we got the kill just barely i did not want to have to death pile more food and is that 30k Oh, 3k. Okay, never mind. Yeah, this guy's drops are actually garbage. I'm glad to be out of here. I'm gonna be honest with you. I've returned to my second best friend, or otherwise known as my second worst enemy. This guy here. Once again, we're going in with the spear for the one, then we're hitting him with the warhammer to see when his HP regenerates, and then finally we go in with the bone dagger spec on one of the two accounts we have here, and hope for that 50% chance of Venom. Now, when I said before, it's not as easy as it sounds, and it's not really a 50% chance, well, you're about to see why. Because I do have light bearers on these accounts, so special attack goes back up quick, but sometimes not quick enough, and I can get maybe one special attack off per account per minute in the very small 20 second window, and I'm trying to hit the one here. But if I do hit the one, I found out there's a chance that I can somehow override the Venom with poison with this weird, bone dagger spec. I don't really understand it. I don't know how that works or why that works. I thought maybe if I changed the variant of the spec weapon to like a normal poison or a P plus instead of a P plus plus, it might change. Also, if I roll a zero hit with the bone dagger instead of a one, it will only poison and it won't venom. So there's a chance that whenever I hit this zero hit, it actually just poisons and ruins the kill and I have to hop worlds multiple times over. And trust me, this happens a lot more than you would think. I have to hop worlds like four out of five times because for some reason my dagger keeps poisoning. 
Now, there was one way to overcome this, and that's with a normal bone dagger, but a normal weapon with a serpentine helm is only a 1 in 6 chance instead of a 1 in 2 chance with a poison weapon, which for some reason seems like a 1 in 6 chance anyway, so honestly we should switch, but I think this might be a tiny bit better. I don't know. I'm just going to tough it out till 25 kills, honestly. So if I hit a 0 or a 1 and it doesn't seem to do anything, not even poison. I did bring this third account, this mage alt, to try and hit a 1 with a last chance airstrike rather than a 2. So if I hit a 0 and it poisoned, I could then change that poison into venom with a 1 before it started ticking down. But still, it's hard to hit a 1 rather than a 2 with an airstrike, so there were a lot of world hops happening. Kill number 9. What the... Malediction Shard 2. Okay, well, this is crazy. I got an Odium Shard 1 from the Chaos Fanatic last episode, so I'm just extremely lucky here. At only 9 KC, they're both 1 in 152, and I've only done about 10 KC on each of these bosses. So I will get those shields soon, but this is kill number 10. We have completed the smaller KC task for the combat achievements. I still want to go for the 25 kill count for the larger task. All right, it's been about two and a half hours, and we finally got 25 kill count. And we got a few good drops, these red dehyde bodies will sell for a decent amount of GP at least. I wanted to go back to Chaos Fanatic for that 10 kills in one inventory task and possibly the 25 kill count task. So I am getting my thieving up to do Death to Dorgashin for a third time on the third alt I have with one strength, high attack, high defense. So I'll have three accounts that can actively use a bone dagger and we're going to have to swap the poison bone dagger for a normal bone dagger so we'll only have a 1 in 6 chance of enemy, meaning I optimally could even have 6 or even 12 counts if you count the 0 hit before using these bone dagger alts but we only have 3 accounts so we're gonna just utilize what we have and hopefully it won't be as bad as I think it is. I will be using the bone dagger as well to hit the initial 1 on the chaos fanatic because it actually does have very high defense and hitting 1 with a spear will be a lot more impossible on this versus the crazy archaeologist. So we're gonna hit a bone dagger 1 then we're gonna start timing our bone dagger with the venom serpentine helm to hit another 1 in the 20 second window that we've figured out. While doing Death to Dorgashin earlier, I noticed the agility requirement for this quest, which is 23 I believe, was to get through this tunnel. I'm thinking there might be a way to mitigate the entire agility requirement for this quest and literally do it at one agility. I'm gonna go ahead and just take care of this guy first, and then from here I'm gonna try and interface walk and do this the opposite way that you're supposed to, not go through the tunnel here and attract that guy's attention at all, actually ignore that NPC entirely. I'm gonna interface walk over here, one tile out just so I get Xanak right next to me to where I can talk to him, and then tell him to wait, then pull the guy to the north-south. Okay, as soon as this guy turns around I'm going to pull him over here, talk to him, and then tell him to wait here, pull the guy from the north a little bit south so maybe he can see him if he walks far enough. And here we go. Yeah, it actually did work. So this pathway is clear. I can maybe then interface the guy next to the door on run west rather than telling Xanak to wait there and run west first. Let's see what happens with this. I'm telling Xanak to wait here, but instead of following the normal pathway, I think I'm just going to interface run west of this guy so he doesn't see me until I'm all the way in position and I can avoid those other two ham members there to the southwest. There, now I've had him turned this way and Xanak should shoot him. Yep, and the doorway is clear. This means we've literally done the part of the quest that requires agility without any agility. So I did not have to waste my, you know, precious 20 minutes training 17 plus 5 agility at Draenor. So I'm going to give these other variants of Poison Bone Daggers a try with the Serpentine Helm. Maybe the Poison won't override the Venom on that weird spec chance. Maybe it's just the P++, but I highly doubt it. I'm not expecting many results from this method. Moment of Truth, did the normal Poison- nope. The normal Poison still goes with the Venom and it's going to override the Venom on the next hit splat. That's super weird. Seeing two a uh, venom and a poison hits both together at the same time, but yeah, we're gonna have to rely on the normal bone dagger and the one in six chance of venom now, and that's gonna be awful. So the exact method of this is I first lure the chaos fanatic over here next to all of my other accounts on the corner where he's safe spotted. Then I go in with the normal bone dagger spec to hit the one. I can then see when its HP regenerates by doing this by hitting it with a goblin cursed hammer, which always hits a zero now since a recent update. And whenever I see that the HP goes back up to full, I note the time on my report button and try and hit it again with the Serpentine Helm in combination with the Bone Dagger to venom it for that 1 in 6 chance in the 20 second window. I then, once it's venomed, 
take this NPC out with my other account and tank it. This is single way combat, so I can't just kick it infinitely, but I get three kicks in and then wait for him to attack my other account again, and then can go back and attack it again for three more turns and just hope that I hit the Chaos Fanatic one time for one true damage before it dies to Venom. And that's because if it doesn't, well, I don't get the kill credit. Lastly, I need to grab Aggression at the very end and take the last hit from that Fanatic to get the drop, and there were some issues with this later on even. So we need him to hit us last in order for us to get the boss drop, and finally he switches Aggression, hits us last, so this kill should be guaranteed. But other kills weren't as gracious to me, as in I hit a 1 right as this thing was about to die, tried to pull its Aggression, and I did, but it didn't even have time to hit me back, therefore not granting me the drop. After like 20 minutes of trying to get a successful Venom as well and finally pulling this off, 9 out of 10 cases, I couldn't even hit this guy for a 1 before he died to Venom. Like right here, I spent the entire time kicking him for zeros and never got the drop. This was vastly infuriating and I spent over 4 hours here for 2 kill count. I could have spent another 12 hours here to get the 10 kills in one inventory technically and never banked on my account, but it was just not worth it. I mean, theoretically, this task is possible, but for a couple of points, I'm gonna actually call it quits on this one for good. I hopped over to F2P in a last ditch effort, literally ditch, crossing the ditch, to see if it somehow forgot that I was on this combat achievement task when leaving the wilderness in an F2P world because technically that area of the wilderness is F2P. So let's see, nope, it still failed the task, I still got the failure message. And there's no way around this. I've tried exiting the wilderness in other ways. Possibly that's, that's not registered to this combat task, but it always remembers and it knows when your kill streaks up. The forestry update, the 11th one, has came out today, and it refunded me all of these Twitchers gloves charges I had for like 500k. I got an extra 500k in the bank now, and I used some willows to purchase the permanent ones here. And apparently they have the clue setting, yep, already on there. So I will be using that to AFK woodcut and get some clues as well as mahoganies in the future. I'm back to Scorpia now. It's really hard to multitask and do this because it, I just get ahead of myself and die on my alt a lot. I can grab the aggression like here and hopefully the venom will remain. But sometimes when a person leaves the area, it kills the venom. But yes, that's our 10th kill at Scorpia. So we did get that combat achievement done. Number 25, and yes, we have not completed contact quest yet. I figured with the DFS, it's just gonna be much easier, and the Scarab here is weak to magic. If I didn't do this, I'd probably have to tick eat with like onions or potatoes and a bunch of recoils. So instead, we're just gonna brute force it with a poison dagger and a DFS and hope that these brews are enough to keep us through the boss. It's funny because this thing isn't immune to poison, but it poisons you. So I didn't expect this to actually work, but I have eight full brews left. I've kind of safe spotted some of the NPCs it summons and we're out of anti-poison unfortunately, but we can still easily take this guy down with another DFS spec. And we did manage to poison him once and hit on him. So it was much easier than I intended for it to be. And I'm surprised I didn't have to recoil and take the entire kill. All right, so we somehow did that entire quest in like 30 minutes on a level way easier than the level three I've dealt with in the past. And we got some HP XP from it. I wanted to do something utterly insane here, and that is poison the Karis and see if it removes the attack requirement of 50, but it does not. Back into the desert now, I think we're going to try to do Beneath Curse Sands, or at least get up to the step where we get to the actual hard bosses in this quest, because I think those are going to be impossible even with the DFS. The first boss in this quest is a guy who actually punishes you if you use prayer. Luckily, we're one prayer, and he's not that bad at all. He's not immune to poison or recoil like the other bosses are, and he doesn't have some insane magic defense bonus. The DFS spec can actually hit on him. So I used a lot of poison and utilized some red X methods to avoid damage from him, but overall, this was an extremely easy boss, and I was able to just sit here while he was poisoned and finish him off with a red X and an interface. So here we go, we're on to the next boss now in the next step of the quest, and that is the two Scarab Mages. I have no idea how hard these are going to be, especially since they're not weak to magic and my DFS, and we'll have to see if we have enough gear to take them on with recoils maybe. Luckily they're not immune to recoils like other bosses later on, so there's a chance. I just have to poison them as soon as possible, and then I have to recoil them and hope that I have enough food in my inventory here. Another thing I realized that was insane about this boss fight is they summon a Scarab which hits you often which destroys your recoils even in this gear and I don't get to use all my recoil charges on just these magic NPCs here which I kind of wanted to do. Luckily though I did get the two poisons off way quicker than I expected and if I didn't get this I could have been stuck here forever and you'll see what I mean here in a second. 
it's cutting it very close. I literally have one brew and three onions left to my name. I tried red Xing this guy, but I just couldn't do it because he would step out instantly as I would step into his body even with a red X. Red X didn't seem to work. As well, these scarabs cannot trap off on anything. They're like transparent. They can't even get corner trap and neither can these mages. It's impossible to move them around. They're like somehow have some advanced pathing I've never even seen before in this game. And as you can see, the boss fight was extremely close. I literally prepared myself to tick eat with an onion the last hit there and ran out of all my brews. This could have gone very badly. I'm surprised I poisoned those as quick as I did. If not, we could have been here all day wasting brews. Looking at the stats of this next boss, I'm believing it's utterly impossible. He's immune to poison, he's immune to recoil, he's immune to everything except my DFS. He also hits like a truck without prayer, so I really don't think this is going to be possible. The main reason I'm here today is just to test how effective the DFS is on this boss, so I'm going to be waiting every two minutes, just kind of wasting some brews, and seeing if I ever hit on this guy, just see how really unlikely it is to hit on him. As well, he summons Scarabs, which once again, you can't cut off on anything, and you can't even red X this guy, so it's going to be a lot of fun. I tried a lot of unique different methods, I even tried figuring out how to get rid of the 2 minute cooldown off my shield so I could just constantly DFS back and maybe bring some of those bottles of Dragonfire Breath in, but there was no way around it, this guy was way too impossible to kill, much less even damage, for a singular hit. So we're going to have to wait for a way to maybe smuggle out the LMS boost for 99 attack and 99 strength to just melee this guy with like something like an Iron Hosta and hope that we kill him in time and don't die and lose that boost. 10th DFS spec, and yep, hit a zero again. This guy is impossible, but at least we're at this step of the quest, if anything unexpected ever happens. Back to Scorpia, and you know how I mentioned my actual defense peer never gets attacked? Well, I was wrong. I was getting ice barraged by some low-level Zerk that could actually attack me, but I hopped back over to see if he was still there because the kill was almost finished, and I'm like, you know what? I need to get this kill. I left the NPC on my alt account so it stayed low HP and didn't die to the venom so it's like maybe 20 HP or so right now then I hop back over he's still there and he's right near me just somehow knows I'm going to do this so I go back here and I'm like you know what I need to finish the kill I need to I need to complete this kill if I get a pet and die even the pet's gonna stay I just gotta pay one mil back to get it and it's worth it so you never know what happens something crazy could happen with this clip I'm likely going to die though but we need to go in here and use our spec on the Scorpia. Fun fact is, he summons his NPCs as he dies whenever you last hit him like this, like that. And look at the drop though. Malediction Shard, the thing I was hunting, I get it. And I get it at a pretty low KC, I think we're around 50 right now. But I've got this guy on me, and I literally only have one brew left at this point, three doses. Somehow I managed to like, juke him out, go in and out. Run this way, the scorpion doesn't attack me so my combat doesn't go out and I was able to log off with one brew left and the malediction shard. I then made my way to the lever and was able to bank this thing so we do have a lot of shards. Unfortunately, none of them really fit each other. I technically have two malediction shards now. I can get the third from my favorite, the chaos fanatic, which is almost impossible for me to kill. But instead, I think I'm going to keep going and try and get the Odium Shard as well from Scorpia because I do have one Odium Shard from Chaos Fanatic already and I would much rather kill the Crazy Archaeologist for the last piece than the Chaos Fanatic. The Chaos Fanatic is just awful, okay? I don't want to go back there anytime soon. And once again, we're getting PK'd by another low-level Zerk who I don't even know how they can attack me. I guess they have lower attack levels which makes up for their combat being so low. But I don't, even, I don't even know if this is the same guy, but I'm just doing the same thing. Going in and out, running away, and then hopefully we gap him enough and then just log out. And it looks like that's going to happen. Yep. Okay. I'm going back in for the kill on the same world again as I left on my alt. Left it with a little bit of HP left and was able to get the last hit. But I think that Zerk actually might have hit it when he was chasing me down or something. That's unfortunate. I got a Dragon Scimitar, I believe that's like a 1 in 126 as well. Good drop, good loot. Okay, so maybe the update that happened the same day as the shield wasn't so bad. Look at my inventory, look at all the loot right there I can sell to the Rogue's Trader Shop. That's gonna be some good GP, just passively going for these shield pieces. So this is what I kind of do if I manage to hit a 0 on the first hit of the Scorpia, just to not summon its healers if it's already under half HP. I'll go over here, take its last hit of aggression, and then I'll spec it and just hope I don't hit another zero, which still has never happened to hit two zeros on Scorpia. But there we go, the healers don't come out until he's already dead once again, and I'm still able to get the loot and the KC. 
This makes a bit more sense. This guy's got Teleblock and he's a one def, so he can't attack me. He's smiting my one prayer here. But I managed to get away yet again with the same method, run in and out of this thing, even though I'm getting maged in full gear, and just try and juke them out enough to where I eventually manage to escape one way or the other through one side of the tunnel or another, and then finally run far enough back in order to log out. And there we go. Almost no supplies left, but we made it out with our rune chain bodies. Again, but there's two this time. One defense peer is attacking me, and I'm just going in and out, in and out, in and out. This is a great manip here. Of course it's a manip, but we're going to call it that. Is that a third guy who can attack me? What is he even doing? Well, whatever. We're going to go out, log out. Look at them. They're just waiting. That's ridiculous. We're at Tob. Yes, I am still doing this, and we got two elite clues by doing our little drop trick before we went into the normal chest inside and then we're able to bank our initial elite clue there so we actually literally have two elite clues and let's hope we can do both of these let's see yep it looks like we can do both of those steps i've never seen this happen but all of us died and managed to recoil bloat and it still put us in as surviving so we're juggling elite steps. Hopefully I can complete my very first elite clue on this account today. I still have never completed one. I always get to like the fourth or fifth step and then manage to not be able to do it. But we're killing this Bandosian guard. I'm actually able to use the new DFS update on this guy too because he's got almost no magic defense. And I can kill him much quicker. I don't even really need to utilize recoils. But he does have a despawn timer so they definitely help killing this NPC since he is 130 health. I recently told people to vote for the shield and the new recoil effect from Varlamore, but I'm thinking maybe I can get the Guardian Boots still, which are the ones that won the vote, because there is a 1 in 2 million chance from this guy that he drops Bando's boots, and it won't require me to get the 70 strength wreck to get inside the Bando's room to get them normally. And yes, you do need Bando's boots to make Guardian Boots. Don't ask me how I would take on the Gargoyle bosses to get the upgrade either. That sounds like even another piece of hell in itself. But if I literally spent, I think, 87 years on average killing these for three an hour, I would have a good, decent average shot at getting these boots. I feel like I would have a better shot at finding some way to manipulate RNG in the entire game and the seed of RNG for this game before that ever happened, though. And throughout this entire Elite Clue, I kept getting these things. It's like, it knew I wanted them, but I never got the Bandos boot drop, unfortunately, from any of them. Instead, I got some ruined throwing axes, which I think in itself is pretty rare, and then a step I couldn't do, but luckily we have another clue in the bank that's allowing us to juggle and continue on. So I'm doing this Anku one last because the last time I did Anku first and I forgot that this guy drops it immediately from his body. You don't re-dig for the clue. You just kill an Anku, it drops it. And if I already have an elite clue on me, I can't pick up the one the Anku drops. So it's good I got the first one out of the way and we have a few steps done before this Anku step hits. And hopefully we can do the next one after this. It looks like we're back in the same location with once again a Bandosian guard that did not drop the boots I wanted. Instead, it gave me some useless headless arrows. And it gave me a step I can't do. I cannot get to this island, unfortunately, on this account build. So that's four steps into an elite clue, yet still we cannot manage to complete a singular one. And no, I cannot go back and actually get more of these and continue the steps on like many of you suggested in my last video. It only juggles the clue step if you already have the clue step on you or in your bank. So. I want to tell a little quick story here about how kindness goes a long way. You'll see a lot of me catching random lucky implings and it's mainly from one guy who does this for money and he's been giving me all the luckies because no one's really been buying them from his sources. I'll get these free luckies but why do I deserve these? Well. A long time ago when I was still hunting dragon implings, this guy was in search of money for membership and he came back to the game and he was like, he was like, damn, my bond runs out in a day. He's like, he got really upset because one of the dragon implings he found me was caught by another person right before I got there. And he didn't ask me for anything or demand anything, obviously, because I never got the implant myself, but I offered him a bond anyways after he told me the situation and how he was like so disappointed. I was like, you know what? It's good karma. Let's just give this guy a bond, free membership. And ever since then, he's been coming to me with these lucky implants for free. And although they're not always rewarding, I think it's a nice story to always, you know, pass along kindness and it'll come back to you at least most of the time. Actually, not most of the time, but a very minimal amount of the time and sometimes it's worth it. 
So Rogue's Chest got a buff, especially with hard clues. It's going to be my number one source for hard clues even without this buff. I wanted to test it out, see how much GP loot I got before I got a hard clue, as this could be some future content for some hard clues as I still want the Amulet of Glory trimmed, as well I want the Ornament Boot Kit for the Dragon Boots when I get those eventually with my Slayer one day. So I'm just testing this out, seeing how it is. I'm in a 1500 total world, so like no one can even attack me. I'm only like 40 combat, and there has been a lot of people who like hop in and try to attack me, and they're like, oh, fair. Because no one in this combat bracket is like 1500 total who is actually PK and they're all just skillers either doing the same thing as me or they're somewhere else in the game entirely. But this loot is looking really good. I could probably even take an alt and lure a lot of these rogues away into other parts of the area and never get hit. But I have such tanky gear, it really doesn't matter. As well, it's very good thieving XP an hour, like 300k. So I could one day go for 99 thieving here and get a lot of hard clues. Speaking of hard clues, after a couple of inventories of food, yeah, I've been using blighted food from Scorpio drops. I managed to get a hard clue and I can do the first step. So they buffed the rogue's chest even more with Ring of Wealth imbued. You can get a one in 50 hard clue instead of a one in 100. Unfortunately, I'm always going to be getting a one in 100 because I can't enchant a Dragonstone Ring, unless I get the LMS boost again, of course. Another hard step I can do, and even another hard step I can do, this guy managed to somehow spawn in a wall, <laughs> but uh, these Zemi Mages aren't bad. This is just a very bad location for them because a lot of people PK here. Speaking of that, there's a guy over there, but he can't attack me. Once again, 1500 total world, around 40 combat. Yeah, I feel invincible out here, but there are some people like that guy who is attacking the wrong person that I need to watch out for. Guess what? Our best friend has gotten us another Lucky Implant Scout for free. Let's hope we get something crazy like Third Age. No, we get a Dragonstone Bracelet. I'll take that though. That's good high elk value. I can sell it to a shop. Maybe one day enchant it. You never know. I've spent a few hours here if you can't tell. 148 kill count, Mystic Earth Staff, the first one I've gotten surprisingly. But yeah, we're trying to get Odium Shards now. 159 kill count, we got the Odium Shard finally. That's a little bit over rate because we already had the Malediction as well. I think it's 1 in 127 for either. For specifics, it's 1 in 256 or whatever. But yeah, we have the Odium Shard now, and now we only need one from the Crazy Archaeologist, which isn't terrible. I decided to come back here for a few more kills because sometimes RNG comes in waves and you never know what's going to happen. Specifically this. I managed to get another Odium Shard back to back on 160 KC after 159, which in itself is a very rare chance. Guess where I'm headed back to, baby? King Black Dragon. Just kidding, Dagonoth Rex, obviously. <laughs> uh, we're gonna be going for a Dragon Woodcutting Axe, maybe a Warrior's Ring, who knows. But um, there's a much better method to do this now that I have DFS. DFS on average hits 20 per two minutes. Guess what? Rex's regen rate is 10 health per minute. So the DFS kind of nullifies his crazy health regen and I can take him down the rest of the way through a singular poison through an airstrike cast on the initial hit with an alt and then recoils. And I'll be doing that by death stacking food inside of Rex and I'll only need the one alt to help me lure my account around there and then another alt to grab Rex's aggro and airstrike it for a one or two, have it regen to full because it's got fast regen, goes to full HP, then the poison which turns from venom ticks down on Rex because he's immune to venom. So it, this is literally a two or three account method. It's not gonna require 35 to 40 accounts like the last one. This is mainly because I'm no longer a hardcore Iron Man. I can die, I can death stack 500 lobsters, and I can now use the DFS spec to mitigate a lot of its health regen. Without the DFS spec though, this would be impossible. So we're dying here with some lobsters to put our gravestone here. Then we're gonna remote die with more lobsters, which will then spawn on the grave under the gravestone, which resets the timer for the lobsters to one hour for every new stack that goes on top, up to about 510 lobsters. This is around 19 deaths after the first initial death, so 20 total deaths, and I should have enough lobsters on the ground here to get four kills, three if I'm extremely unlucky and hit a bunch of zeros with the DFS. So optimally, we're looking at three or four kills per hour if everything goes perfectly. I know that is not a lot, but it is still way easier to do this with only two accounts. Me navigating one towards the very back here being my defense account and avoiding ever getting attacked by Prime or Supreme. And then just having this other one pull out the airstrike on Rex, poison him, get the first poison off and go at it from there, just eating lobsters, chugging them down my neck as Rex hits me for 26s, eventually take off my armor to get more recoil damage across and using my DFS spec, making sure I use it every two minutes. 
So the account that lured Rex over here and initially did the one damage to poison him is going to then log off by X logging in this area because all the Spindelips are going to be attacking him. It's kind of hard to just normally log off in this area. But as soon as I want to, I'll just reopen another Runelite client, go to my world, and then set up the account once the first kill is over. And then I can go on to the second kill. And like I said, it's about four kills per inventory if I'm lucky and I never hit a zero with that DFS. I'm also logging back in at the end here on the alt account because I want to try and throw a bind and get the freeze rex while you kill it task for the combat achievements done. I'm a little slow here and I think the bind is only 5 seconds and that was maybe 6 seconds wherever the actual DFS killed him so it didn't count the combat achievement task the first time around but we'll try it again. Initially though this is only going to be needed until I get that task done as I just want some more combat achievement points. Another great thing about Bind is, unlike Snare and Entangle its higher level counterparts, it never can do real damage, so it's never going to nullify the kill there for my Iron Man at the end, whenever I've gotten it all the way down and done all that work. Once again, I lure over Rex, hit a 1 to go ahead and have its HP regen to full, then the Venom starts ticking down, and from here I take off my gear, recoil it, DFS spec it, and finally throw the Bind the same time I launch the DFS spec, and there we go, a Frozen King task is complete. There's another task I can take on here that's possible which is me taking aggro from supreme and prime while rex dies and i'm going to do that at the end of my inventory as seen here unfortunately i did not take the aggro this time around so maybe the next inventory i can do this at the very end we'll have plenty of attempts because i'm not that lucky most of the time and this dragon axe might take me forever to get so I'm going back here to once again put a remote grave then die over and over again and repeat the process for four kills. You know what would be absolutely insane would be if I get a Rex pet and honestly this is the very best place I can be using my remaining around 1000 recoils because recoils are absolutely necessary to kill this boss. I can't hit him accurately enough. He's got very high defense to poison him and repoison him with his very fast HP regen rate. I'm having to absolutely utilize another account recoil him and use the dfs spec so i need an iron man with both tons of recoils and access to a dfs in order to get a crazy pet or drops from this npc which in itself is insane to think about to someone like me whereas your average person seeing a rex pet following an account like this might not think it's that impressive but it would have the most backed crazy requirements if not 40 retribution alts instead for the last time, I have to mention this Gommel's Hilt 3. It is so amazing. It's so much easier than rock caking and going to the wizards. So hopefully I don't accidentally kill this with a recoil this time, but I need to get it down just enough. It's got very fast HP regen, but I also need these two NPCs aggroed on me to take the final damage here. Hopefully that kills it. Yep, barely. Like I could have hit a 16 and not killed it just then, but we did. We got the task completed. That's a lot of points for a task. And without the DFS, once again, I think that would be impossible. It's funny to see a Zamorak brew as a drop from this guy because I'm honestly going to pick that thing up and use it because it lowers my defense and therefore my recoil can hit a little bit more. Although I don't want my defense too lowered because honestly, without armor on, I'm having trouble keeping up with just eating lobsters. There's been a couple scary times. I've been doing this for a day or so now and there is the warrior ring. I don't really need that, but I will take it. It's better than getting two berserker rings, I guess. And I still need the dragon axe. Don't know when that's going to happen, but it's the same drop chance as that and the Addy Axes you've been seeing. And the Ruin Axes are the same drop chance as well. I've gotten three of those now, I believe. So unfortunately, our Rex grind is not yet over. I never got the Dragon Axe and I spent multiple days there getting four kills an hour, maybe even a little less on average. But I did do some more zeal and I managed to get 98 HP on this account. One more level till I get my first max combat stat of the two. I'm going for HP first and then defense last because the lower my defense as I've explained before the easier it is to recoil some of these NPCs like the Rex so I'm not really focusing on that. If you guys enjoyed the video make sure you subscribe. Thanks again to my Patreon supporters and sorry for this video being a little bit more relaxed in terms of editing. I just thought there was enough mechanics and content in it to kind of make up for that and I've been super busy IRL maybe even looking at some future prospects of different things to kind of revamp this channel although we'll still be focusing around the defense pier. I might be going somewhere with kick soon who knows. Follow me on kick either way one day I'll stream there I'll put that in the description below and I'll see you guys next time.